number 72. Welcome to another edition of Old Baptist Weekly. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. We hope you came praying. Uh, we're absolutely privileged tonight to have Elder Jeb Owen with us. How you doing, Brother Jeb? Doing well, thank you. Uh, Brother Jeb, remind us where you're serving at. I serve as Fred Stratton. Uh, sorry, you cut out for just a second, Brother Jeb. Say that one more time. I pa pastor at Pilgrim's Rest in Stratton, Texas. Uh, lots of wonderful memories at Stratton, and uh, and we certainly love all y'all down there. Praying for you. Hope hope things are well with y'all. And uh, again, we're just privileged to have you on tonight, Brother Jeb. We hope the Lord has placed something on your heart and given us ears to hear it. And uh, with that, we're going to ask Elder Mike Hughes to lead us in a word of prayer. He would bow with us. Dear kind, merciful Heavenly Father, as we come before thee this evening in this little capacity, 
We thank thee, O Lord, for thy divine word and thy truth that sustains us. We pray, dear Lord, for this dear brother who's about to speak in thy holy name and from thy word. And we pray that thou would bless him as thou hast blessed him before, but we know that he needs thy grace and mercy this night. We pray as well for those that are listening and those of us on this panel that thou would bless us, O Lord, to receive that which thou hast for us this evening. O Lord, thou knowest the needs that we each of us have and the yearnings that we have for thy righteousness and thy truth. And we pray that thou would open doors for us, O Lord, that we might step through and to that brighter and larger room that thou hast for us, O Lord, that we might rejoice for a short time together and in thy glory and in those things that thou would have for thy children. We pray this evening for those that are on the beds of affliction, those that we may be mindful of, and especially for those that we may not be aware of. Bless each one of them. Bless each of those that are listening on this broadcast this evening and those that may listen in the days ahead. Bless us as thy people, O Lord. Lift us up. Guide and direct us, O Lord, in our path from day to day and strengthen our faith. And may we look unto thee in all things, O Lord, and to give thee the honor and glory that thou so much deserves, and especially to thank thee, O Lord, for the blessings that thou bestows upon us. We pray now, O Lord, that thou would be with us in this little time together, that things said and done would be honoring unto thee and glorifying unto thee and edifying unto thy people and to each one of us. Bless this dear brother as we've asked, O Lord, be with us in this evening, for we ask in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Amen. And with that, Brother Jeb, the floor is yours. Thank you, Brother Daniel. Thank you, Brother Mike, for that sweet prayer. I ask you all to continue to pray as we go into this this evening. Um, it's been on my mind, what's been on my mind, I guess, this week, a few days, is fellowship. And how important fellowship is, uh, one among our local church bodies and, and even going outside of that, among our brothers and sisters of, of same faith and order that we fellowship and, and what that means. And uh, where I want to start this evening is in second chapter of Acts, where we have after uh, uh, the, the day of Pentecost, happen and and uh, apostle peter stands up and, and and preaches to him and and gives him a pretty frank sermon of uh y'all crucified the lord is this uh y'all crucified by your hands was crucified and he went on through the life of jesus some but then it says they were pricked in the hearts and they said, men and brethren, what shall we do? And the, uh, Peter answered back saying, um, repent, be baptized, every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin, and ye shall receive the Holy Ghost, the promise. Let me make sure I read that right. The gift of the Holy Ghost. <clears throat> For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are afar off, even as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Verse 41, it says, Then they gladly received his word. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Verse 42, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. Now, I think I'll go over maybe all of these a little, but I want to come back and focus on fellowship. They continued steadfastly. I, I love to look. Uh, in the book of Acts. It's, it's one of my favorite books to go into. And, and I guess I, I, I'm a fan of history. I like history. And I like to, as much as I can, trace the roots of the church. 
I like to, as it tells us in Songs of Solomon, uh, if thou knowest not, O Ferris, among women, go thy way by the footsteps of the flock. And here in, in the early days of the church, at just, I, I put myself in that, that just try to put myself in the situation and think on what it was like then. And when 3,000, they said 3,000 were, were baptized um, somewhere it uh, in here it says as these were ordained into eternal life were baptized. I think that's a that's a hundred percent. We hadn't we don't see that anymore these days. Uh, that all of God's children that hear it believe it and and follow it. But here the key is as they continued steadfastly. That's in in these what we've been through lately in the state of the world right now uh, i tr i feel like we've taken i let me speak for myself i have taken the church for granted and the fellowship of my brothers and sisters i've taken that for granted uh but how sweet it is uh if you miss it a little while and, and i'm talking about when we are able to congregate together and that fellowship and love flows from breath to breath uh, and how important in these days it is for us to continue steadfastly. But he says, first, continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. Uh, the doctrine of God, the teachings of God, our fundamental beliefs, it's what uh, feeds our souls to hear the salvation of our souls. I believe he says in Ephesians chapter one, where he says, after you believe, you heard the salvation, the good news, I mean, the, the salvation, the good news, the gospel of your salvation. There it is. The good news of your salvation. And when we hear that, because we have this warfare in us fighting and, and we, we know uh, that of our own self, we can do no good. But when that sweet message um, comes that tells us that God of, came to save sinners, as the Apostle Paul says, of which I am chief. What a sweet message that is. And we congregate ourselves and, and press into his kingdom. And, and uh, <laughs> Let me tell you, uh, learning about uh, his doctrine and his word, uh, another uh, scripture I was thinking about was in uh, Proverbs chapter four, and it just pop, popped off the page at me. I love the way some of the wording is. It says, with all thy getting, get understanding. I like the way that just just sounds a, a country like with all you with everything you've got get understand the more we learn the closer we are to the lord and we learn about that and it helps us uh in our day-to-day -day walks and he says they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine which the lord jesus christ himself set up here he set up the church and um uh, he uh, uh ordained the apostles and then the apostle paul told timothy these things that I've committed unto you, commit thou unto faithful brethren. I love to see the secession of the large church. And I love to think on uh, all of us here, we've had people lay hands on our ordination. Well, those folks that laid hands on us, someone laid hands on them. And, and Lord willing, it goes all the way back to that time. Just like baptism, all of us were baptized by men who was baptized and there the secession of the church like that and and it says they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine but then it says and fellowship and breaking of bread and prayers all these things i believe pertain so much to the church I, i'll be honest with you i was, was wondering about the uh, breaking of bread was that they ate together or communion well i um, got converted to its communion today uh earlier today i was not there but I, i've been on the fence about it but that's a, a function a a part of the church 
and the prayers. It says it ends with prayers. And I think of James, how the, the prayers, where it tells us the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And it is a joy to see the Lord's church work as he designed it and us to lift each other up in prayer. But this fellowship, he says, they continued. They continued in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship. Oh, how I treasure the fellowship of the Lord's children. I want to go to uh, Philippians chapter 1. The Apostle Paul, this is, hey, I said Acts. This is another one of my favorites. Uh, my wife tried to get me to say, quit saying that's your favorite. I can't all be your favorite, but <laughs> it's one of my favorites. But here he says, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine, <clears throat> for you all making requests with joy, for your fellowship in the gospel for, from the first day until now. I'll keep on reading. Being confident of this very thing, that we, he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. So he said, I thank God for your fellowship in the gospel. Now, I think this was a special deal for uh, the apostle Paul here. and and. and and it relates to the ministers, but it's not limited to the ministers. We all have a fellowship in the gospel, a fellowship in the truth. And, but I, I put myself in Paul's shoes. Uh, uh, I, I like to go back from Philippians and go back to the book of Acts and find where he first went to Philippi. And he baptized some folks at Philippi. Well, first was, uh, as far as I know, the first was, um, uh, Lydia, uh, who went to the river where prayer was wont to be made. And then the jailer, he was at Philippi. And I think when he wrote their possibly thinking of them, that's supposing, that's what I'm thinking. Uh, that, but it's evident that he had a special relationship with these. He said, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you for your fellowship in the gospel <clears throat> from the first day until now, being confident of this very, it was proof to him that the Lord had in, indeed begun a work in him and he would see it through. What a beautiful picture of uh, preservation of the saints here I see. And, and then we go to the next uh, chapter here where the Apostle Paul's talking. He says, if there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies, for ye my joy, that ye be like-minded and in the same love, being of one accord and of one mind. Oh, this this uh, passage of Scripture has just been on my mind the last couple of years. <laughs> That's how long that, that one is. When I see strife in the world, all it my is we cannot let it in church and here he says if there be any consolation in christ i, I love the way the uh the bible is set up in going from doctrine to duty to works uh second timothy two nineteen, he says um having this found a, having this seal the the Lord knoweth them that are his, and let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Here he's saying, if, if seen, if we have felt in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies. That one's always puzzled me, but I looked that up today, and I, I believe that that's the compassion if you will coming from our very soul our inward man where we feel uh uh the love one to another and he says if you felt any of that and then before that he says fellowship of the spirit there's the key to fellowship between one another is we all have fellowship with god we press into his kingdom and and 
as the song says, heaven comes down our souls to greet and glory crowns the mercy seat. And I think of this verse and I think of times that perhaps we've been in meetings together, big meetings or, or Sunday morning church and something special happened, <laughs> a miracle happened where the gospel was preached. <clears throat> And our souls were knit together. We were knit together. If any fellowship of spirit, if any bows in mercy, then he says, fulfill ye my joy. Oh, I tell you, I believe the apostle Paul, it was, it was important. To him. He was concerned about the churches he served, the churches he went to, that they like my having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Now, just on this screen, we've got all kinds of personalities. <laughs> we've got all kinds of different, uh, man, different beliefs on different things, not doctrinal, if you know what I mean. We've got just different, different backgrounds. How can we be like-minded? He, he wants us to be like-minded. Having the same love, being of one accord of one mind. I believe it's going to answer the question here. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Verse 5, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant. In the likeness of men. Right there, I believe, is how we be like-minded, how we have fellowship with one another, is the heart of a servant whom the greatest is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who came. I, I love, it says himself of no reputation. If there was anyone who ever could make himself of reputation, it was him. It was him that said, when they came to take him, that he said, whom seek ye? They said, he said, they said, Jesus of Nazareth. He says, I am he. And immediately they fell back on the ground. If, if there was anyone that could have said, do you know who I am? It was him. But he made himself of no reputation <clears throat> and took on him the form of the servant. And may we strive to serve one another and in doing so serve the Lord. Let me rephrase that. Let, me, let us strive to serve the Lord and in doing so we will serve one another. And the fellowship is a great blessing. We're, we don't fit in this world. If we follow after Christ, you're not going to fit in this world. But oh, thanks be unto God, he set up a place where we can come with people who are of like mind, who know they're sinners, but know they're sinners saved by grace. And that sweet fellowship with one another, but most of all, we have that fellowship with our Lord. Thank you. Amen, brother. Amen, brother Jim. Yes, Amen. sir. Appreciate that. Uh, Dave, I believe you have first. Dave is first. Okay. But I wasn't ready for you to quit there, brother Jeb. Uh, I was. I was really enjoying that, and uh, you're having uh, you're having good liberty preaching on uh, fellowship, which is a uh, subject you don't hear much preach these days, or at least I haven't. Uh, but I am curious what you, you you talked about breaking a bread today. You thought that was eating like lunch, dinner today, this morning. You said this morning. This morning went too many hours ago. <laughs> I was wondering uh, <laughs> if you're eating breakfast or lunch, and you thought, I think that means communion. I mean, like. What what what? Well, tell, tell, I, I may have had some help. Well, I, I want to hear. I may all have that. had some help. Okay, go for it. Someone tell, might tell. have told me if you take that. 
If you take that on Old Baptist Weekly, they probably won't fall out with you, but those Montgomerys are going to give you a hard time. Okay. <laughs> We're not going to make that person a liar, Sonny Huckabee, but at any rate. That sounds like Sonny Huckabee. No, that wouldn't him. That wouldn't him. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, Fair enough. Keep, keep going. Keep talk, talk. Walk us through that there, my friend. Well, it was Brother James, uh, and I don't oh. Okay. I, the way I was looking at it is it was something done often, and I guess we uh, do it maybe once or twice a year. So that's why I was, oh, I guess that's just breaking bread together, having meals together. So. But then looking, and Brother James pointed this out to me, and I agreed that all these things are things that pertain to the church uh, doctrine prayers um fellowship and then it makes sense that that would be one that doesn't per se okay uh, i'm not going to give uh, brother james conley the satisfaction of being right <laughs> i'm not going to give any conley that satisfaction mm. uh i'm not falling out with you uh i i'm gonna i'm gonna I'm really going to consider that. I see the point. Uh, I can say this uh, after communion service. Uh, I feel much closer to my brethren. And to me, that's very, very intense fellowship that we experience in that service. So I can certainly see that point. And uh, I think fellowship is a landmark, a hallmark, uh, identifying of the church. Uh I don't know if any other religions have fellowship like the old Baptists do, but I know what we've got is I have not seen it in any sort of relationship or affiliation or association that I've had in my life. There is something very special, very unique, almost supernatural about it. It's a, it's an understanding. It's a love. It's an acceptance, even though we're very different as far as, uh, our likes and dislikes uh, and all that are, are concerned. And uh, even whether it, it, it transcends age and background. I mean, I remember you, Jeb. I, my first, you know what? My first memory of you is, is, is your mom taking you out of church. <laughs> years old. You were about, you were going to get the whipping of your life and you did. And that was better than the sermon we were being forced to hear. Great. <laughs> And Marianne Owen just giving you the what for. I mean, like, man, I don't remember anything else about that meeting right there. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, so I've known you, you're over, obviously over four years old. But, uh, and, and yet, you know, whatever the difference of age is between us, you're my brother, you're my equal. And, I get you. I know you. I want to like uh, have some more time. So you and I need to go on trips together, bro. We just did one time to old union. Why don't, you know, we need to stop being so busy. You know what I'm saying? And, and get the car and we're just living an hour from each other. There's no, it's, it's ridiculous that it's taken us this long to get this point. Um, I want to say this, that I love you. Being in fellowship with you is a joy and a privilege of my life. And in, in that scripture that you read there in, in Philippians, which is one of my favorites, one of, it, to me is the loveliest scripture in the Bible. Uh, I thank my God, wow, upon ev every remembrance of you. And Paul was thinking, he, was, he sang songs in a Philippian jail, and he thanked God for that memory. Uh, he was persecuted. Yeah. He thanked the Lord for that memory. He baptized those people by the river. He baptized the jailer in his whole house and memories that are not even recorded. That is the beauty of fellowship. It's a personal thing. It is also a very shared thing. It is a private thing. It is a public thing. It is a natural human emotion. It is also a very, very intense spiritual experience. There's so much to be said about it and so much that we haven't said that we need to say more. And I want to thank you for preaching on that today. God bless you. I love you, Brother Jim. Thank you. 
Love you too. All right. Next. <laughs> Brother Jerry. <laughs> Brother Jeb, um, it's so good to hear you uh, tonight, and I agree with Brother David. Uh, Lord uh, was surely blessing you to um, go through the, the the beautiful doctrine of fellowship and to elevate it uh, before us tonight. I was not ready for you to quit. Um, it's it's one of the fellowship in in, in the Bible is one of my I don't know. I guess it's becoming a sugar stick of mine. Um, yes. The older that I get, uh, the more I, I rejoice in in the fellowship uh, with the saints. Um, and, and the longer that I go, uh, the more I find how the strength behind the fellowship uh, becomes even more Im important to me. I uh, I love where you started in Acts two, and I want to I'm going to make a couple of uh, quick points, uh, and then I want to ask you for your thoughts on um, one of the things that you read in Philippians. But you know, in Acts chapter two, where you were uh, when you started out, I, I love the fact that you emphasize continued steadfastly. Mm. Our fellowship is not based of something uh, upon which we've come up with. We we continue um, in that which the Lord established. We continue in the things that He handed to the apostles. We continue in the things that they handed to faithful men, and that we continue in things that uh, we can follow the the perpetuity of it right down to where we are tonight. We continue in those things. And I, I really appreciate you, you making that point. Uh, steadfastly, that's an interesting um, term. You know, there's, there's not enough steadfastness in the world today. Um, not enough stick to uh, People, you know, they, they get uh, at ought with one another or they get an itch that they haven't had before and, and they're going to do everything they can to scratch it. Uh, Listen, fellowship is something steadfast, and uh, it's it requires diligence, and it requi requires constancy. Uh, if we're going to serve the Lord as as He intended, uh, it's not something that we dabble in. And, and and then as you went through those that that are in that that forty second verse, the the doctrine. This is what the point I want to make. And uh, when I spoke last on OBW, I I went to Philippians one. Um, and tried to talk a little bit about that, particularly the fellowship in the gospel. Well, Peter elevates the point right here. We're continuing steadfastly, not in stuff that we come up with or things that, uh, that are important to us. I mean, I love you to death, brother, but yours and my fellowship is not based upon uh, anything less than the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And the beautiful part of that is that that's unchanging mm -hmm. and it's more powerful than any external force that might attack our fellowship. And that's, that's precious to me. Um, it's, it's the apostles doctrine. That means it's authorized by Christ. <laughs> He's the one who gave it to him. And then we have fellowship in that fellowship in that, that, that word is very intimate <laughs> and it is a very participatory word, right? It, it speaks of communion and participation and, and things that, that draw us together. Um, Brother John Wallace Thrower, everybody on the panel knows him and most everybody that's listened to the broadcast. Um, he, has a, he has a phrase that he uses and I love it as, a, uh, as it relates to fellowship. He says, the bond of our fellowship must be stronger than the cares and the trials of this life or the fellowship breaks down. So the bond of our fellowship has got to exceed beyond uh, the, the trials and cares and the ups and the downs and the, the things that this life throws at us. And I'm so thankful tonight to, to know of a truth that our fellowship is based on something that is unchangeable. And that's the word of our Lord and Savior. Uh, go to Philippians 1 real quick, and I want to ask you a question. I want to just want to get your thoughts on this. Um, I read over it last, uh, last time I was on OBW, and I don't think I really commented on it much. In verse 7, first of all, you, you started out 
uh, right where, where I started out uh, on that session, uh, relative to the remembrance, that's a memory that is given unto you, I believe. It's not something that you conjure up. Um, it, it says, verse five, for your fellowship in the gospel, I think that's the overriding context, from the first day until now, being confident of this very thing that he which began a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. And this is where I want to get your, your thoughts. Even as it is, excuse me, even as it is meet for me to think this of you all, because I have you in my heart, inasmuch as both in my bonds and the defense and the confirmation of the gospel, ye all are partakers of my grace. Do you have any thoughts on what Paul is, is looking at there, partakers of my grace? Mm -hmm. Yeah, my thought is I, I should have... Uh read that today and thought i'm hope they don't ask me about that <laughs> <laughs> uh, i would <laughs> what i think off the top of my head is the grace bestowed upon him in his ministry what does he say in uh first corinthians first corinthians chapter 15 uh where he says i labored more than they yet not I, but the grace that is in me or something like that. That's, that's what I was thinking it was uh, without digging deep into it yet. Yeah, I, 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 but I would concur with that thought. The, the word is, is a co-participant or a companion. And so Paul was obviously driven to uh, exhaust the gift of his apostolic call for the benefit. Uh, what, what scriptures say, I endured all things for the elect's sake. Uh, yeah. I, I think to, to the, the thought of being a partner in the grace of someone like the Apostle Paul and, and those that, that uh, you know, that, that extend from him, um, Timothy and Titus and, and what have you, to be a partaker of the same grace is a great privilege that we have. And in my mind, the way I think of uh, it, it really defines our fellowship with, with one another. Brother David mentioned the, the commonality that we have. And the, um, we're, we're, there's no other people that I've ever met in my life that are similar to the Primitive Baptist and how we interface with each other and how you can travel from coast to coast and even a, a, in other parts of this world. And there's a fellowship there yeah. that defies definition. Absolutely. That's precious. That's precious. I love you, brother Jeff. Thank you for this message tonight. Uh, love you too, brother Jerry. Brother Dad. Oh no, brother Jeff. You should have told us it was brother James. Where's the mute? Finally, <laughs> that, uh, Raise I, these, I shouldn't have. I don't know why. Yeah, that, it was like David, brother, brother, brother said, it's just almost too tempting. <laughs> uh, a yeah. rabbit to go chase. I lived it for you. Well, I, all I would say about that is the answer is yes to whatever question was asked. <clears throat> and that question is, is it the communion bread? Probably. Uh, but I would also suggest <laughs> that there's a room in, in the use of the phrase breaking of bread for probably what was a, yeah. a way that the Jewish people back then took to uh, their meals, the way they, they handled their meals. Uh, a, a hint is given of all places in Galatians 2 where it talks about the apostle Peter sitting with the, at the table with Gentiles. And then when certain came from James that he stood up and separated himself. Well, the table was the, was the meal table, but it was more than just the meal table. It was t t eating a meal together. Well, like the Passover, the Passover was a meal. They literally ate roasted lamb and bitter herbs and uh, unleavened bread. But it was it was more than a meal. So I just want to say this to, to 
anybody that's wondering how to answer that kind of a question, <clears throat> it's best to say it is the communion, but don't be too uh, stuck on and miss out on a, a thing that is important about eating together as believers in Christ. I think that's an essential element of fellowship. Mm -hmm. I love the lunch after services. Amen. Uh, I miss I miss that more than anything else during the COVID. <laughs> I miss that. Now, come on, let's just be yeah. honest. I'm ready. Well, well, then you old, can't do it. Members would agree. You can't eat food together. Uh, you have to literally be there. That's the one thing. And I missed uh, missed that time. You know, was was is eating lunch together after services? Is that a religious thing? Is that a can be? But it can be. Yeah. <laughs> It, it should be. I mean, we should be uh, grateful to the Lord for the food that we're eating. There you go. Bless it. And then uh, as we eat our food, we should be uh, mindful to talk to one another about spiritual things. Yeah. One last thing on that. On the road to Emmaus, when those two men uh, were met on the way by the Lord, and they didn't know it was the Lord. And you know the story. Well, they, they, they came to a resting place at the end of day. And it says that <clears throat> the Lord, let me see if I got this right. He said he, this is Luke 24, 30. He took bread and blessed it and yeah. break it and break and gave to them. That's right. Now, we mm -hmm. can just stop right there and say, well, they're just having a meal together. But look what happened as a result of what the Lord did. Tell us, tell us. It says, and there eyes were opened Ark. and they knew him hmm. when they ran back to tell the disciples that they had seen the risen lord they made a point out of saying about how he broke bread there's something uh, I, more than just mechanical about the breaking of bread it was and I, of course, you know you think well you're probably making a mountain out of my old brother mike Okay, I just won't be the first time. But I will say this. <clears throat> In today's fast-paced world, we have lost something special. <laughs> what have we lost? In anyway. the times when we share meals with one another. Oh. You know, we, 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 have, we have put the Lord's Supper, it's by, by necessity become so distinct from our common everyday life. But to them back then, I think it was special, but it was something that happened frequently. Mm -hmm. And that's what I think strengthened fellowship more than anything else. I, I really believe this, brethren. I, I think the Lord's Supper, including feet washing, of course, <clears throat> mm -hmm. is meant to increase the bonds of fellowship in the church. Amen. Primarily first with the Lord mm -hmm. and then with one another. Mm -hmm. And that's why it has to be done the way the Lord says to do it. If we don't do it like he says, with the kind of attitude that he expects us to do it in, it's, it's not just that we don't get the fellowship. Sometimes we get something worse. Hmm. Okay, last thing. Who's, who's after me? Brother Mike Hughes? Brother, Brother Mike Brown? Mark. Fellowship is a great word. I was looking up the definition of the word in Webster's. I won't bore you guys with it today. And I think, you know, fellowship, fruit of the word fellowship is fellow. Fellow means companion or partner or equal or friend. Uh, but it means someone that's engaged in a, sim in a similar activity together with you. You're yoked together. So I looked up, it's interesting for me anyway, how many different ways the authorized version pairs the word fellow with another word. For instance, fellow prisoner. Work fellow, fellow helper, fellow citizens, mm -hmm. fellow soldier, yoke fellow, fellow laborers, fellow servant, fellow persons, fellow prisoner, fellow workers. I, I bet there would be a great study if Mark Brown would just do it. It would be a great <laughs> study and how all those combinations of the word fellow with those other words somehow together paints a full picture of the sense of what fellowship really is. Mm. Because we're fellow laborers, we're mm -hmm. fellow citizens, where these are things we are yoked together to do with the Lord. <clears throat> and I, I'm going to try 
to do a better job of studying that. I, I really appreciate you bringing that subject to our minds. God bless you both, Jeff, for the mark. I'll give it over to you. I uh, really enjoyed that, Brother Jeb. Um, you know, when it comes to <clears throat> when it comes to fellowship, um, I look at it a lot like what brother uh, what brother Mike had just talked about, especially about partnership. Um, but the, there's something unique. Um, there's something unique about our fellowship. Um, so, like brother David said, <clears throat> a lot of people, you know, n- knew me when I was. Uh, a young lad and uh like jeb probably got drug out just as much as you did brother jeb so uh, I, I consider myself to be in good company all right it's a toss um, sure. <laughs> um but the uniqueness of of our fellowship and i think everybody's touched on it i believe is brought out by first first john chapter one verses one through three and I remember hearing brother Jerry preach a sermon, uh, on this, and it might've even been on OBW. I can't remember. Um, but the apostle John says that, which was from the beginning that we've heard that we've seen with our eyes looked upon, uh, and our hands have handled of the yeah. word of life, you know, so you, that, that chap, that book starts out with John seemingly bragging, <laughs> You know, we got to see him, we got to hear him, we got to touch him, we got to be with him for, you know, three, three and some odd years. But then, you know, just jumping over that second, that second verse, just so we don't get into that. He says in verse three, that which we have seen and heard declare we unto you that ye also may have fellowship with us. Mm -hmm. And truly our fellowship is with the father and with his son, Jesus Christ. So the apostle John wasn't saying that just to say, you know, how look what we got to do and y'all didn't get to do it. He mm. was saying, this is what we got to do. Now we're going to, pre- we, we're preaching about this. So you'll know that this is what we got to do, that we'll be able to have fellowship because we got to see him, hear him, touch him with our physical um, abilities but we get to see him and hear him touch him with our spiritual uh, abilities or through faith. Mm -hmm. And John says, we have fellowship with one another in that. But then he says, truly our, so he takes the one another, brings them together and says, our fellowship is with him. him. And I believe the, the essence, the, the essence of fellowship, um, is a partnership, but if it, God is not involved, I don't believe it's fellowship. I believe it might be a, a, a natural friendship, right. a natural acquaintance, uh, you know, two people that, you know, share a lot in common, you know, but until God is in that matter, there is no fellowship. Um, you know, one brother, one of brother Mike Montgomery's favorite verses to, to use, uh, at weddings is Proverbs chapter four, verse 12. Is that right? Uh, and if one, one shall prevail against him, two shall withstand him threefold and a threefold cord, yeah. cord is not quickly broken. So I believe this fellowship, in fact, in the book of Philippians, the apostle Paul uses the term fellowship in the first chapter second chapter, and in the third chapter. I think it's fellowship of the gospel, fellowship in the spirit, and fellowship of his sufferings. Um, And I believe those are wrapped together, just like our fellowship is wrapped together in Christ Jesus. Um, And how critical fellowship is to the church. Um, You know, we, 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 we fellowship when we sing, um, we, we blend our voices. We fellowship when there's prayer, we fellowship in the gospel, like the apostle Paul said, uh, yeah. And if you want to slice and dice breaking a bread between communion and dinner on the ground, you know, slice that and dice that however you want to. Um, but there's fellowship as long as God is there. And if God's not there, there is no fellowship. That's when, that's when everything goes awry, 
-hmm. right? That's when that's what they say. That's when it starts running off the rails. That's when all these different personalities and these different people from different walks of life stop getting along. Yeah. Yeah. But when, but when God is in the matter, all these people from different backgrounds, different personalities, all this, they don't just get along. They enjoy the experience with one another in the house of God and in sweet fellowship. And that's what fellowship is all about. So when it says they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and in fellowship, uh, I believe that steadfastness, I believe relates to the prayer of the saints that God would walk with us Mm -hmm. because when God walks with us, um, man, everything's good. (laughs) You say, well, I don't know, brother Mark, I've had problems. No, when God walks with us, everything's good. Even during the valleys, through the valleys, through the tempests, through the problems, when God walks with us, everything is good. Now, let me throw one more unique thing out and then I'll give way. Do you know that what we have learned over the past year and a half is that we can fellowship just like we're doing right now. Ain't that true, bro? Amen. And is, that, is that amazing? So that to me is so overwhelmingly amazing to That's think. That's the power of God, man. That on right. Wednesday, right. on Wednesdays, we're eating dinner early. Mm. I'm coming in the office early. I'm getting online early because I can't wait to see y'all. That's the power of God. And that's the power of God, brother Mike. Amen. Mm. And that's what fellowship is all about. Mm. Now, would I prefer to be in your presence? Absolutely. Mm. This past weekend, we were blessed to be at the Fort Worth Brentwood Hills meeting. Brother David, brother Mike were were able to be there. And it was, it was so good. It was so good to be with them and to hug their necks and to talk with them. It was so good. But God is not bound by a screen, by wires, by anything. And remember, we have a threefold cord, and it is not quickly broken. Yes, and the sir. only, you know what? The only way that cord gets broken is when when we peel ourselves off of it. Amen. That's right. Because right? yeah. God's not going to God's yeah. going to be there. But when we unwind ourselves from that threefold threefold cord, I've always struggled saying that. Threefold cord. Thank you. Thank you. Amen, brother Jeb. I love this, the the subject of fellowship, and uh, and you know what? I appreciate my fellowship with you, brother Jeb, mm. and the folks there at Bethel. Can't well, wait to see y'all again. <clears throat> Go ahead. Uh, I, uh, it's it's my turn. I'll just freely admit when we added brother Mike Hughes to uh, permanently to the panel, I kind of redid the rotation a little bit, which put me right after Mark Rowell, and I have regrets, okay? Uh-huh. I have regrets. <clears throat> um, oh, it's like me being after brother Mike. <laughs> <laughs> But from a different perspective, yeah. <laughs> he's thinking of it as a positive. You're thinking of it as a negative. Hey, um, I, I think it's just. Here's a little bit of a global view. How, brother Jerry, you said. Uh, I think it was brother Jerry said that. Uh, how many times have we heard fellowship sermons? Um, until recently, I can't remember that many. You know, I, until recently, I can't remember that many, but especially here on OBW and the meetings that I've been to, uh, it seems to be on everyone's mind. Uh, I also believe that because we keep hearing blessed messages like brother Jeb, this is also something the Lord is, is speaking to us about. Uh, right now. And it talks about our situation and, um, you know, it, it, COVID and everything that we're coming out of. Um, I needed a reminder today that um, we are a peculiar people. And I know peculiar in the original way uh, it means specific, um, not necessarily in the way that we would use it today, which would be to say someone's peculiar and it's, it's kind of like weird. Right. Um, but uh, we're, we're that too. We are. Yeah. That, yeah. I was going to say, we're, 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 we're pretty much that too. We are that. Anyway. 
Speaking uh, for myself, anyway. <laughs> so, yes. Uh, <laughs> You'll see. Good. Uh, Y'all, y'all don't, y'all don't want to see what, uh, when we're not on air. Okay. It's, it's just, it's very silly. Um, but, huh? huh? It's, it's not silly. It's peculiar. You're yeah. right. He makes an excellent point. We're moving on. Okay. Um, we are a peculiar people in the sense that, um, just like they said, anytime you go to somebody's house, it doesn't matter where they are. Uh, you feel right at home. And I, I think it's because that because of what we believe and how we've held to it, there's this uh, sort of tradition of, of behavior, not just among each other, but just how we are as individuals that is not, that doesn't, <laughs> to use a, a word the kids use, does not necessarily vibe with the rest of the world. Mm. Um, we are... The same people in Walmart as we are in our living room, as we are in our job, as we are in church. There's no varying degrees, at least of the primitive Baptists that I know, of all of them that I know. You're not going to find a different version of us based on where we're at. You're not going to find a... Uh, I mean, we have jobs and we have to do these kinds of jobs and... There are certain things that, that we have to do, but it's not like we just completely switch gears and now we're in a completely different uh, uh, way of, of being, of existing. And over the past, I guess, few weeks, I've really noticed that that is not the norm. That is not, that is not the norm. Part of who we are and our fellowship is that Every single Sunday, we openly, honestly, bear our souls to one another. We are, for lack of a better phrase, spiritually naked. We really are. And when we share like that, when we open our spirits to one another, it creates a sort, it just, it just has momentum. It takes itself into the rest of our lives. And then all of a sudden, we are just who we are. That's how we can travel all the way to California or East Coast or wherever it is. And you land into the living room of another Primitive Baptist, and you're just in the, you're, you're as at home as you would be in your own home. I think where a lot of the tension is, is that we want to act like the cool kids sometimes. <laughs> And part of that means that there's uh, we engage with each other so easily because of what we have. And the world does not necessarily have that. And so they have their ways of engaging with one another. And those ways are not exactly much like our ways. And especially when we were isolated from each other, uh, and especially when I, I mean, the, the very few people I actually physically saw were like people at work or that kind of stuff. It's easy to forget sometimes. It's easy to engage in ways that um, are not like the things that Brother Mark talked about. And that can also bring itself into our fellowship. And so for me, in my mind, I would rather err on the side of treating everyone else like primitive Baptists than treating primitive Baptists like everybody else. That's, I, I think that is the power of our fellowship. It's not just for us and among us. It teaches us to be and think in a way that is God-like, it is Christ-like, and it's a shocker to the world. And that's powerful. And it's just a wonderful way to be. And we just absolutely must remember that. That who we are is what Christ taught us to be. And we have the ability to go out into the world and be that way to people that are nothing like us. Except they're fallen sinners just like us. <laughs> um. 
I don't know. Those were my thoughts. I don't know what you think about that, Brother Jeb. Here, here. What I think? Yeah. I thought of something. Yeah, yeah Jeb. Jeb. <laughs> hey, could you repeat all that, uh, please? <laughs> He's off. He's gone. Well, there he is. <laughs> I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> No, no, you're going. No, you're not. Uh, is he there? Did did I just ruin everything? <laughs> you you kicked him off. Can y'all not hear me? What well, we yeah. can hear you now. Yeah, we can hear you. But but, but quickly before you freeze, stay fast. Oh, I don't know. Uh, uh, I thought of this. Uh, what that verse i'm trying to think of that verse uh as much as you is live peaceably among all men mm -hmm. do good to all men especially ah. the household of faith yeah we yeah like galatians to, 6 10 like hammer down on that there you go yeah we like to hammer down on that especially the household of faith but right uh, and sometimes I, I seem to want to forget the first part <laughs> <laughs> yeah. tonight right <laughs> Yeah. Uh, but uh but we gotta we gotta try to do it all. Yeah, yeah. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. Uh let's see here who's next. Uh brother Mike Hughes. Yes. Uh Brother Jeb, that was uh that was beautiful and, and timely for us, I think. And the Lord blessed you and and blessed us and uh, you know, I'm I'm thankful for sitting here in the, in the uh, cleanup position, so to speak, because I want to thank all you brethren for your comments tonight. Um, this has been rich. This has been rich, and and we need this. And and I think what it has for me, and I hope for for some of us, all of us, it reminds us. And I think Brother Daniel kind of used that term. It reminds us. Our citizenship is in heaven. Yes. yes. And in heaven, think about that. When we're in heaven, the fellowship we're going to have is going to be immeasurable. Yeah. Because Amen. the Lord will be with us. Yes. We're going to be yeah. with the Lord. Yes, sir. And so when Brother Mike says, and Brother Mark says, you know, God has to be in, in the fellowship. And that's what Brother... Jeb, you're, you're bringing to our attention. And when you, you quoted from the scripture, you know, where it used the term steadfast. I, I, I love to look at those kind of remarks that the Bible and the apostle would often use, because you go over to the 15th chapter of 1 Corinthians, he uses that term again. And he uses it after he talks about the resurrection to come. But he leaves it with something. It says he's, he's giving us this beautiful picture of what we're going to be like. Because think about the fellowship we're going to have when sin does not be part of it. Yeah. When we're free of sin, think of the fellowship we're going to have. Boy, oh, man. And so he says, therefore, my beloved brother. That's a fellowship right there. Be mm -hmm. you steadfast, unmovable, mm -hmm. always abounding in mm -hmm. the work of the Lord for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. In the Lord. That's what Brother Jeb has brought to us, I think. And, and this is not that labor we know that's going to, to get us into heaven, right. but it's a labor in fellowship with one another, but it's a labor and fellowship with the Lord that takes us to the communion. And the communion is a union with the Lord yeah. to, to think he gave us this, he gave us this and we can participate in it here yeah. in time, even though we're, we're weak and we're undone, we can participate in something that is a, a, the most solemn service of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and we can fellowship in that. And, and then he left us that example to, uh, to partake of in fellowship where we bow at one another's feet. Amen. And to think that our Lord did that. And in spirit, we can, we can bow at our, our Lord's feet 
by bowing at one another. But our citizenship is truly in heaven. And I appreciate what you gave to us and these brethren have brought to our mind. I think, I think it was you, Brother Jeb, that you used a, a quote about souls being knitted together. Mm. And I thought of that term knitted, you know, that's different than just sewing. When you knit something, it, it becomes entwined. Right. It, it's yeah. a different, it's a different pattern than just a, a sewing something. And so our souls become entwined as we continue our fellowship here and, and own into heaven, you know, uh, how often have we we heard in, in prayers that, you know, the, the humble prayer that's offered sometimes and says, Lord, we may not be gathered in this same capacity as we are now, but we have a hope that we'll be in a capacity in heaven and complete. And that's that's just a beautiful thought. And then having this mind in you, which is in Christ Jesus, uh, the the fellowship christ had with us and and you know that he would even come and take on a body of flesh and and be among us and and as john represented i think brother mike represented that quoted that from first john maybe it's brother mark uh, oh. you know he talks about hearing him seeing him and touching him. and and uh we're going to be able to do that someday we're going to be able to do that someday. And, you know, we have that to look forward to, but while we're here, we have this, this, this fellowship, a blessed, blessed opportunity that we have. And, and, you know, in terms of the bread breaking and communion, yes, but I agree with you, brethren, the lunch time that we have or that fellowship time is, is just so priceless. And to have time to sit and talk, in spiritual things and um it's a blessing it's a blessing so i'm i'm thankful to the lord i'm thankful to you brother jeb I'm thankful to you brethren for those uh beautiful thoughts that that were brought to us tonight to, to think about and to rejoice in that the lord has given us so go ahead brother daniel we have some many sermons from mike mosley in the comment section <laughs> yeah. i'm shocked I read them. They're all they're all good. They're they're good. Okay. The grammar of the text, the apostles, quote unquote, doctrine and fellowship ties the fellowship directly to the apostles. It could read the apostles' doctrine and the apostles' fellowship, which means the fellowship under consideration is fellowship with the apostles. We still have that today, if we follow the doctrine and practice of the church built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. That's what John was saying in 1 John 1, where Brother hey. Mark was reading. Yep. Yes, we, yes, yes. Yep. yep. Uh, let's see here. I, we have... A fe okay, Joe Holder, Fellowship, an old British Isles tradition, one shepherd watching his fellow's sheep when his fellow shepherd is absent. It might touch a bit our contemporary cliche, I got your back, but so much more. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. hey, Uncle Joe is amazing. That, that'll work. I, I, I mean, I'm so glad he brought that. I would have never found that in a million years. <laughs> yeah. Only one, Uncle Joe. We, we need an Uncle Joe's Thank almanac. You, That's what we need. That's right. <laughs> Thank you, oh, no holder needs to do that. Good yes, grief. he does, man. Yeah. Where he gets these from? No, it's, just, it's amazing. <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's like Wikipedia. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Thank you all so much for being with us tonight. Brother yeah. Jeb, thank you for being with us. Uh, we were, that was a wonderfully blessed message. Mm. And, uh, and, and we got to have you back on again, you know, sooner than, has has he not? Maybe my, I'm just not having a good memory. Has he not been on since? No, he uh, was on that week two, and then uh, we just now uh, got back yeah, to that him. Was, yeah, that was yeah. enough. It took you a while to try again. <laughs> to try again. <laughs> yeah, that was the infinite, infamous beer bread episode. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about. We're that. still. Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> well, um, <laughs> well that's right. Well, hopefully we can have you back on sooner than a year and a half. Uh, Brother Mark, who do we got going on next week? Man, y'all aren't going to believe this. Eh? It's Daniel Montgomery. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let me get Jeb. Let's get Jeb back. Yeah, let's get Jeb back. Oh, yeah, oh, oh that's yeah, rough. Jeb and Connie on the same totally time. Okay. There you hey, go. but but listen, listen. Two weeks from tonight, yeah. we're having our next hard shelling session. What? Oh, yeah. Hey, who do, who no, do we got on for our November? Hard yeah. November Brother the third. November the third. <laughs> we've got um, brothers Mike Ivy. What? Jo- Jonathan Cook. What? Rick Stewart Ow. and Uncle Joe Holder. Joe yeah. Holder. Yeah. So that's two weeks. Two weeks. Can we just skip ahead to that week? We can do it November, next week, the right? <laughs> November the third. November the third. Some of the questions that have come up that we're going to try to talk about. What do you think, Brother Jerry? What do you think? Oh, just y'all pray. Yes. Pray that yes. the Lord take the leadership. Next yeah. week with Brother Daniel, as yes. he did tonight with Brother Jeb. Mm-hmm. And then certainly we're going to need a special dose of that grace for the heart <laughs> session. <laughs> Lord yeah. willing. Uh, uh, y'all, please join us. I mean, you can skip next week. That's fine. No, 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 no. Just start praying now. Um, and uh, we, we look Pray. forward to seeing y'all next week and the week after. Um mm. Please mark your calendars for the hard shell. We 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 do this twice a year, and uh, it's one of our absolute favorite things to to do. Yep. Um. So please join us again, brother Jeb. Thank you so much for being with us. We're gonna try to have you back on sooner than a year and a half. Yes. Yes. And um, we hope you all felt blessed by tonight's broadcast. We certainly did. So, uh, with closing prayer for tonight, we have brother Mark. Oh, if you'll bow. Our Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for another opportunity to be in thy presence and to hear thy word proclaimed and enjoy a sweet fellowship with our brothers and sisters. We trust that you'll continue to bless our efforts, that you'll watch over us and all the things that we do, that you would guide, guard, and direct our steps in our everyday lives, that you would continue to bless those who stand in need of, of healing, that you would strengthen those who are mourning and you will watch over each of us um, in the things that we stand in need of. Forgive us of all of our many sins. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 And with that, we'll say good night. Good night. Good night.